Hello, and welcome back once again to the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. This is episode 245. John and Wendy talk to Deborah Jeffries. I'm your host, John. And I'm Wendy. How are you tonight, John? Wendy, I am well, and we are well into November. Once again, excited that this episode is being sponsored by our friends over at Namely. Thank you, Namely. Be sure to check out namely.com slash HR Social Hour. Get that first month of service free when you sign up. Satisfied you end mm-hmm. user here with Wendy. Yes. She can speak to the quality <laughs> of product. And as all of you know, we've been very, very fortunate to have a tremendous relationship with Namely over several years and, and appreciate them being with us here at the end of the show. Wendy, while the show is ending and we've talked, we're going to continue to talk about that over the next four or five yeah. weeks. Chat is not going away. Uh, the chat nope. will continue. Still having that. A question has come up regarding how are we handling things with some of the uh, changes going on at Twitter. And our position right now is that we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And if things change, we'll let you know. But as it is, we want to continue to be as positive a presence as we can be. Hope that you will take part when we're doing those things. So to that end, we are asking for people to start considering if they are interested in co-hosting a chat in 2023 to reach out and let's start those conversations. Definitely. We, we love your all's ideas and, um, it just, it brings the community a little bit closer, I think. And especially with one of the things too, that will help with a lot of the changes that I've been having, um, happening on Twitter. Um, I don't, I know you said it hasn't, my feed has changed a lot in Twitter, so I'm going to start using lists more. So, um, I, you can have an HR social hour list where you only follow, um, add people that are part of our community to it so that you can really narrow down what you're looking at and and who's filtering in there. So don't go away. Don't get scared off with everything that's happening. Stay on Twitter and join us for the chats. And if you have a great idea, we'd love to hear it. We'd love to chat about it. I don't know about you, John, but I'm starting to get a little tapped for ideas. Well, I think the great news is when we do have folks come in, they bring ideas that you and I have necessarily never thought of. Exactly. They're always engaging and entertaining. If you have those ideas, please share because... Yeah, we'd love to include those. The other thing we wanted to talk about, most of you are aware we have had merch for the last several years. The store, where you get your shirts and your mugs and onesies and all that cool stuff, the store is not closing because it's easy and fun to have. It is very humbling to have banana shirts and logo (laughs) shirts and all these things literally around the country. Just as a reminder, if you do purchase something there, all the profits are donated to charity. And Wendy, it's kind of amazing to think that since we started the store, gosh, it was like April, May of 20, it was early, early pandemic, we yep. launched, we've donated over $1,000 to various charities. I think that's fantastic. I think that's fantastic. I can remember talking to one of our previous sponsors in Podbean and telling them that we sold merch. They were stunned. People <laughs> buy shirts. And I said, yes. And they said, that's not common for a show like yours. And I said, that's okay. We have, we an, awesome, we have an awesome community. Yep. And the cool thing is we are able to do that. The store will stay open. I, however, have a lot of stuff here in my house that needs to go. <laughs> Previous guests have get little yep. packages. If you are interested in stickers or a coaster or some things like that that I've got, shoot me a note on Twitter or email somewhere yeah. LinkedIn, wherever you get a hold of me, get shoot me a note and, and I'll send you some merch. I'm going to keep some of it for my mementos and what have you, but I would like <laughs> to get most of it. <laughs> you don't need 25 <laughs> copies of the same thing. No, but unfortunately, you know, like the big things, and some of you remember in Pledge Drives past, we gave away bottle openers. Mm-hmm. We did we did some really fun stuff. Those are gone. <laughs> so no bottle openers <laughs> anymore. I think I may have one or two left. You know, we did a couple of things to get some extras out. You know, stickers and coasters and yep. my little Star Joe's avatar sticker. I got quite a few of those. If somebody's interested in that, shoot me a note. We'll get a little package together for you. Yeah. And I think I still have a few laying around here too. So when John runs out, we can start giving away Wendy's. <laughs> Speaking of community and people that have been very active in our community, well, we were putting our list together of the final 10. We talked a lot about who we wanted to have and who we knew and who we had not had a chance to have on the show yet. Deborah came to mind quickly because she has been around a long time and it's a shame it took (laughs) so long to get there, but we are here now. Let's make the introduction and get started. 
Yes. So excited to welcome Deborah Jeffries to the show. She is the vice president for HR Answers, where she is a consultant and trainer with organizations of all sizes across the country, but mostly in the Pacific Northwest. She has over 30 years in human resources with an emphasis on training. She is passionate about the employee experience and helping organizations build success from within. When she isn't in front of a classroom presenting, she loves her downtime. She fills her time reading arts and crafts, reality TV, and gardening. She likes to grow her own food, and she has a rain barrel composting ball, and this summer had solar panels installed for the house. I I, I could probably ask you many, many questions about that because I find solar panels fascinating. But first question always, what is in your glass? Well, hello, hello, everybody. Here's the deal. You guys are a few hours ahead of me, so I'm still at work out here on the West Coast. So water, and because I'm a Frappuccino gal, mocha Frappuccino, because it's only, you know, still before, it's not even five o'clock here. So I can't be drinking anything special, no adult beverages. Sorry. And and the boss is in today, so even more so. (laughs) Deborah, we respect that. We also appreciate that you're making time during the workday. Have to ask, though, how in the world did you get your start in human resources? Okay, so we could talk for a long time just about that because most people don't believe me when I tell them I was 17 when I started in (laughs) HR. And that is the gosh, honest truth, because there's a program that I believe is nationwide, but it has altered over the course of the decades called Junior Achievement. Back in my day, my dad was actually a site supervisor. You started a company with high school, juniors, seniors, maybe even sophomores. We built a company and you made a product. I mean, you actually made it from scratch and you had to go out and sell it. Well, we actually had a position that was the HR person. Well, back then it was basically payroll because the people made money. We actually paid the employees for what they were doing. So I was the HR person and I did the payroll. I took, you know, attendance and we made sure what was going on. And they actually had an element of this activity where you had to compete each semester for this, for lack of better words, kind of a competition. So you competed and you had to like have knowledge in the HR space. And our local SHRM chapter actually sponsored this thing because depending on how well you did per semester, then you actually competed nationally. And long story short, I won for the year and I went to Indiana and competed nationally with all these other students. That was my first HR job and it was in payroll. (laughs) I hate payroll. (laughs) (laughs) And I have never touched payroll again. Truly that is the beginning of my HR career. And I will tell you that my mom was involved in HR and still is to this day. When I had to, I had to go make a little presentation to the Sherm chapter in Portland, Oregon, and all these people that my mom knew because it was her local chapter, and I'm meeting them years later, then here I am a now HR professional, and they're all, hey, I remember when, and they all found this little newsletter, I don't know what it was, goldenrod paper cartoon that said, and I kid you not because everybody had to send me a copy, and I have dozens of them, Someday, daughter, this will all be yours. Well, guess what? She got into consulting, and guess where I am today? So the apple didn't fall far from the tree, and it was not intentional because I was supposed to become a high school teacher. I don't know. Strange path. There you go. So the second week in a row that we've heard about J.A. Oh. So you'll have to listen to the last episode, the previous episode, where I talk about my experience with J.A. because my mother was a teacher, high school teacher, and was very involved with J.A. from the education side. Uh, Well, Deborah, you have been with HR Answers for the majority of your career. So how have you seen HR work shift in that time? And what keeps you excited about what you do? Well, you know, when I first got got involved in HR, I mean, first of all, industrial psychology was kind of the thing. Personnel was the word. There was no, quote, HR. There was no formal education, quote, to do HR. It was kind of payroll, benefits. Oh, hey, you're the office manager do these things. So the thing that's really I've noticed is how much more formal kind of it's become, um, which is exciting and that people choose, right? You don't fall into it by accident. 
that people choose to, they want to, that they're passionate about it. And I'm sure you, like many of your listeners, there's this element oftentimes where people have said in the past, I think it's still a little bit true today. I so love working with the people. It's like, well, I hope you like compliance and I hope you like this and I hope you like that because you see people on the very best like when they're applying for jobs. This is the jaded HR person in me coming out (laughs) because after that, a lot of stuff happens. (laughs) That element of the formal programs, the degrees. I've been involved at Willamette University and their MBA program with HR specified as their area of interest. So isn't that wonderful that we have so many people that definitely want to get into it? I have found my niche and obviously my educational background uh, really has supported this because I worked in retail, in restaurant, in manufacturing environments long before I ever got to HR Answers. And I had some HR and education and outside sales before I ever came to HR Answers. And I pulled all three of those pieces together. So it was kind of like when you do that look back, everything added up for a reason that kind of landed you here. Education has always been something I've been a fan of. I like to learn, but then I like to share it. So being able to do that now as a career and help, whether it's an individual, a group of individuals, people I know, people I don't know, that side of HR and whether it's helping HR professionals learn stuff or whether it's individuals within the organizations like the managers and supervisors we so often need to partner with inside our organizations, then that's just the stellar piece for me because anything that I can help in terms of tips, tricks, ideas and suggestions to make people's life easier or things they didn't know and then they kind of do the aha moment or they are able to use it and implement it and they're like, why didn't I know this? Why didn't I have this when? Kind of like, I don't know, but you have it now and and it works. And so go, do, be, make it happen. Deb, we're really fortunate because we get to have practitioners like you on that have a lot of experience and particularly you get to work with a lot of different companies and, and clients. If you look in your crystal ball, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for HR professionals in 2023, and how are you preparing for that? I wish I had brought my crystal ball. I was just using it for Halloween, (laughs) because I actually have one. If you were to ask me about that in the state of Oregon, I would tell you that Oregon paid leave is gonna be a huge issue for employers. There are nine other states that are dealing with this, and 11 who are embarking on it. You do the math, that's like half. I have this sneaking suspicion just in general that paid leave is going to be this thing where maybe even the federal government might get involved. Now, it might not be before I retire. However, kind of if those of you who have been around for a while might remember how ERISA got involved and that it became something that the federal government said, eh, we're not going to have the states be doing this anymore. We're going to kind of take over. So I think that that's a big thing for people and just in general for our employers across the board. But let's face it, everybody's dealing with this finding good talent and being able to retain that talent. That's not going away anytime soon. This is a concern. And we're getting mixed messages when it comes to what's the economy that we're in. But think about this from the mental health and well-being, hybrid and working remote. That's that's not going anywhere. People are still grappling with that and what's going to be their best answers. Leader effectiveness, whether that's manager, leader, you define what that looks like. They are more important than ever in the retention strategy conversations and what we're doing. If we haven't even talked about those things, we still have compensation and pay equity that is mounting and mounting. I don't know, and if you're into tech and AI and connecting that to HR, that we go on and on. So depending on where you're at, What are those kinds of challenges? We're in very complex times. There's a lot going on. I appreciate you bringing up the Oregon paid leave piece. That's not something I necessarily or Wendy necessarily deals with. It's nice to hear what's going on and what other people are seeing and hearing about because that's how we get prepared, knowing it's coming down the road realistically for, for everybody else. That's one of the reasons why I like the HR Social Hour and our Twitter activities and conversation is because the majority of the members, I believe, 
you're not on the West Coast. I get to learn and pay attention and hear and connect with people who are not hanging out over here. Deborah, you do a lot of industry related events. What have you been doing lately and anything exciting planned for 23? Oh, let's see. Exciting? Hmm. I don't know about that one. So we just got <laughs> done. Uh, for those that don't know, as an HR consulting and training firm, we do spend a fair amount of time being able to participate as sponsors or exhibitors at certain kinds of events or activities, sometimes large, sometimes small. One of the things that we just got done doing last week um, is called Coupa HR. And so it's the Colleges and University Personal Association. And we were doing the one here in, in the state of Oregon. And that one's been a pretty steady one for us. Um, we've also done uh, much larger for on behalf of Cuba. Every now and then, we kind of rotate that one in. But we do things with what we call special districts, which are like fire, ambulance, water, soil, those kinds of things. We also do the SHRM local chapters, their region kinds of activities. We don't have state conferences. We actually have a tri-state regional conference um, and have done that for decades. Doing those kinds of things have been pretty standard for us, and we love it because it gives us a chance to network with folks. So next year, I've already reserved and bought my conference information, going to go to SHRM, going to go in person. Very excited because I've been online the last couple of years. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. So when I said, pretty please, can I go in person? My boss was like, go, get out of here. <laughs> I am trying to look for other places that it makes sense for HR answers to be. That is a request for, is there other places that make sense for us? Because we don't have only certain kinds of industries that we work with. And that's the thing that makes it fun, but it also can kind of sometimes have your hair pulling out because we work for private, not-for-profit and public sector and have for decades. And so we can be anywhere doing anything and we have clients across the country, then that means where's the return on investment, what makes sense, who can best utilize our services, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so if you know something exciting, please let me know. You started to talk a little bit earlier, Deborah, about being a, a West Coast participant in the chats, and, and that is a fairly unique proposition for us. You're, you're right. We don't have as many folks from the West Coast that get to participate all sometimes. Step back, because while it is about you, we'd like to talk a little bit about us. How did you first find the social hour, and then what's kept you engaged, other than be, being one of our West Coast correspondents? I think, if I'm not mistaken, that we can thank our friend Steve Brown. Steve and I were in Arizona for a regional SHRM leadership meeting. I don't even know how many years ago, because that was a while ago when I was active, because I've been a member since 1990 of SHRM, and I have been on all kinds of boards at the chapter level, at our state level, and our regional level, and sometimes I went through the cycle again, like, you know, chapter president twice, and not back-to-back -back years. And so I think he might have been the way that I got introduced. Somehow connect, somehow said something, something, something. I know that's very, very poetic there, Deborah. <laughs> um, and then, I mean, you guys are entertaining. You guys are thoughtful. You have good conversations. To be perfectly honest with you, people kind of like said, like that comment that Deborah made. And I was like, Hey, I must be seeing something good. They said they liked it or they commented or we chatted back and forth. And so I'm like, hey, this is kind of fun. And honestly, <laughs> I'm the person who goes to a conference and I veer to the left and to the right. And because I'm going someplace and I'm trying to meet people I don't know, who don't look like me, who don't sound like me, that I'm trying to get away from people who are in the Northwest because I hang out with you all the time. So I really am always looking for people who aren't like me so that I can learn and get to know and network. And that's truly what I find so exciting is because you guys are talking about or referencing things and I'm like, do I know about that? Can I learn a little bit more about that? And what I find out about some of you is like, 
John, you and I, I mean, we already have a junior achievement connection. It's like, there you go. And I think that we might have, we're not necessarily collecting the same action figures, but I think we have some similar interests maybe in the Star Wars kind of maybe out there because I'm kind of into that sort of thing. So, you know, so when you start learning some of those things about people, you find these connections and the only way you do that is by talking, asking, listening. I find the people part of the HR Social Hour just fabulous in that regard. They're so kind and giving in that respect and quite friendly. So why wouldn't you want to hang out with a group of people like that? I mean, even if I haven't met them in real life. So keep it up. I think we can agree with those those comments for sure. We do have fun and that's the important thing. Deborah, as you know, um, as a listener, we are outsourcing some of our work. And so you get a two for one question from a previous guest. When we interviewed Julie and Chad Sowash, they each had a question to ask. So Julie wants to know, where would you like to retire? Chad would like to know, what is your favorite song? There is no favorite song, but I will give you an artist. Okay. Okay. Well, let's just put it out there. Madonna. So if you're <laughs> a, a, of a certain age, you know her, you know her well, because she is my driving buddy. I like to uh, accelerate on the freeway. I like to crank her up. So when I am driving to a client site and I'm getting ramped up to do my presentations, she's on. When I'm driving the three miles to get someplace and I am enjoying the view, she is on and I am singing at the top of my lungs, enjoying the moment and truly enjoying the moment. So anything Madonna will be just fine. No favorite song, but well, let's go artist. For the question from Julie in regards to where I'd like to retire, I want you to know that I've actually been asked this like three times this year, which is very concerning <laughs> about where, Deborah, when will you be retiring? And I'm thinking, am I really getting that old? I'm a little concerned that I've got this, I've got this idea and the husband's sort of on board with it. So even better, if you like to cruise on cruise ships, then I'm thinking one of those suites that are like at the top level, doesn't have to be the very top, but they actually have cruise ships where you basically are like getting a condo on the cruise ship, you buy it, it's yours, and you live there, and you travel. Wherever that ship is going, you're going. The only concern that I have is I've got a lifetime of you-know-what in a house, a two-story <laughs> house, I don't know what the, I'm going to do with all that stuff. Um, but I'm on board for traveling the world and seeing sights and experiencing things. I'm a little bit of a foodie, and I would like to take in the culture. I don't speak any second languages per se. I work a little bit with my French. Took a second language in high school and college. Spanish is something that my son uh, took in high school, and we know un poquito. And so I, I really want to travel more. That, Julie, would be where I would spend my retirement. Absolutely dream world. I like that. With that, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. This episode of the HR Social Hour Half Hour podcast is brought to you by Namely. Running HR for a mid-sized business means you need software that can keep up with all you do so you can focus on strategy, culture, and keeping your employees happy. You need Namely, the all-in-one HR solution that makes life easier for your employees, your management, and you. Namely's HR platform covers your essential HR and compliance needs all in one place. Whether you have 50 or 1,000 employees, Namely's all-in-one integrated platform is designed to be used by everyone every day. With a mobile app and elegant UI, Namely lets employees request PTO, appreciate peers, review their pay stubs, even answer their own HR questions. Namely offers it all. From onboarding and payroll to time tracking, benefits, employee engagement, and so much more, you'll finally have the time and data you need to drive the initiatives your company really cares about. We want you to simplify your HR processes with Namely, so we've arranged a special offer for listeners. Right now, get a free month of unlimited access to Namely's all-in-one HR platform by visiting namely.com slash HR Social Hour. Thanks again, Namely, for sponsoring the HR Social Hour Half Hour podcast. Now, back to the show. And we are back, Deborah. It is now time for everyone's favorite part of our show, the Half Hour Question Connection. We know that you had other plans prior to joining HRs. What career did you dream of having when you were a child? 
I always thought it would be fun to be a flight attendant until I started traveling a lot for work. (laughs) 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 And then I was like, oh, that's a good thing. Uh, Yeah, I always thought it would be great because you got to see the world. You got to travel all over the place, right? And you got to meet people all the time. And you were friendly and happy, I think, all the time. (laughs) Deborah, I know you said it's hard for just one. Usually we have people too. Who's one person you've gained your network in the last year you think more people should know? So I do on this one, John, I have just one answer for you. Her name is Jennifer Lambert. She owns and runs Terra Staffing Group. And she has a segment that she's created out of out of all her doings because that organization is in Phoenix and Denver, Seattle, Portland. She has a spot that she calls HR Hotspot, and it is a one-hour webinar one day a month on a Friday from 10 to 11, and I would encourage anybody and everybody, now again, West Coast time, because she does it out of Seattle, but that's Jennifer Lambert, Tara Staffing Group, uh, HR Hotspot. It is fabulous. She gets people, guest speakers to come on and share. Sometimes she interviews them. Sometimes it's just a one-hour program. But she is phenomenal, not only in her knowledge and the way she thinks, but the interview questions that she has, the guest speakers. I've been fortunate enough to be one of those, but mostly I learned so much from those folks. And it's an hour that if even if I absolutely cannot join and I pretty much join every month, she records them and then you can catch up later if you miss it. She's been phenomenal and I would recommend her to anybody and everybody. Deborah, if you could go back to the start of your career, what's one piece of advice you would give yourself based on what you know now? I say this to everybody. To know me is to love me. I'm a type A personality. I'm a workaholic. When my son went off to college this year, he said, I'm really worried about you, mom. Chances are good now that I'm going off to school, you're going to work more than you were before. <laughs> I was like, that, no, that's not going to happen. And my husband said the same thing. And actually the other night it was a Friday and it was 1030 at night and I was working. So maybe they know me better than I know myself. I would tell myself, relax, enjoy, take time for yourself. Life is too short and it will all still be there, Deborah. I think that is something that I could have really benefited from in my 20s, my 30s, and my 40s. And so now I'm trying to learn that lesson. I think these People who I now supervise in their younger ages, I'm so jealous that they know how to have some boundaries because I didn't, and I still sort of struggle with that. How do you enjoy giving back to the HR community or even your community at large? That's two different answers. The HR community, I truly do give back in terms of education. I do SHRM study cert prep. I give programming and educational time to the Sherm chapters. I work with the MBA students at Willamette and do like informational interviews and things like that. All those kinds of things, basically anything Sherm related is a big deal to me and, and has been. And as long as I'm still doing this, probably always will be. Um, when it comes to the community in general, education is huge. So I uh, taught my son early on, let's go get school supplies for schools and programs that are less fortunate. Um, And when it comes to the animals, I'm a huge animal lover and uh, just got done uh, at our local uh, Humane Society doing Bowser's Boo Bash and raising funds for for the shelter um, because all of our animals that I've had growing up and my husband and I have been animal rescues um, and they found their forever homes and right now we have two cats that are 11 years old. So that is huge uh, in terms of our world. Those are things that I do to give back to to others in some fashion or another. Deborah, what's your favorite movie? Kind of have two. There's the one, if if either of them on, I will watch them. I will keep it on. I will stop everything I'm doing. Kind of the sound of music. We're entering into the season where we're going to see it. And then if I'm really feeling, this is, I don't know why this word is hitting me right now, feeling frisky. Uh, I like dirty dancing. That thing gets me going. That's a good one. I I like me some dirty dancing. Yes, indeed. (laughs) That is quite the combination. 
I know it's good, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, originally when I was thinking about this, because when you listen to your show, right, you hear all these questions and some of them, I'm like, Oh, what's my answer to that? What's my answer to that? And I'm like, I don't really have one. And that's like, oh, well, maybe I sort of do. <laughs> How about your favorite or the most memorable live performance you've ever attended? I've listened to so many of those responses you've gotten, and people have some really great answers. I'm not a big concert goer. One of the first ones I ever went to, do, do either of you remember or ever heard of Devo? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah with the, the planter pots on the head. One of my friends, uh, he was my camp counselor, and he got me tickets. Uh, at the Paramount Theater in Portland, Oregon, and I got front row seats. I thought that was the coolest thing as a teenager, and and then I've also seen the dueling piano. You know, I, we've got. I am. That's a terrible one. I don't think Devo is a terrible answer at all. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I was hoping you'd say Madonna. Christy Engler saw Madonna as a kid, and it changed her life apparently. So it's kind of wait. <laughs> I, I've heard that. I heard that. And I was like, I've never seen her. You know what? I come from very humble beginnings and didn't have a lot of money. And concerts have not gotten any less expensive. They've only gotten worse. And so I'd rather spend my money on something else. <laughs> Fair enough. Deborah, if you could be on any TV show, either as a character or yourself, what would it be? When I was younger, I always thought it'd be fun to be on Survivor or Big Brother. And I thought, I can do this. I have a psychology and sociology background in terms of my, my education. I'm like, yeah, I can play these games. Now that I'm so much older, n no, it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I rock, and I mean rock, at Family Feud. And huh? I want to be on that show. And my husband's like, you go on ahead, but I'm not going with you. <laughs> but we do watch at home. And I play and I like I mute the TV uh, or I rewind so that I can play fast money and answer those questions. And I I want them to be able to give me other answers or when they say the number one answer was, you know, elephant. Tell me what the points were because I'm keeping track. <laughs> and I am not joking. I am a very, <sighs> very competitive person. I do not want to play if I cannot win. And when we do our trivia nights with the HR Social Hour, it drives me crazy because I'm not doing very good at those. And uh, uh, yeah, so when it comes to Family Feud, the highest I've ever gotten is 187 points by myself. And uh, yeah, so I like to play that game because I think I, I don't know, I do really well. And I'd be up for winning $20,000. I, I think I could do that. So let's go. I love it. Who wants to be my made up family? We'll put an HR family together. <laughs> there we go. Let's there we do go. It. Well, recently it was announced it's going to be Deborah Jeffrey's Day all around the world. What are we doing to celebrate? If you were with me in my office right now, we'd have to have a whole lot of M&Ms. That's just the candy of choice. And I would like to have Mickey Mouse be present because he's my man. And always has been. When I went to Disneyland, when I was, I, I went as a child. I've been many, many times. But I never actually got to meet him. When I went when I was in my late 40s or so, I actually cried when I met him. I would ask him to be like part of a parade or, or something like that. I would just like people to, to come and have fun and celebrate. I don't really know if I know what all that means. But I just want people to have a nice, enjoyable day. And if that means giving back, if that means, you know, doing arts and crafts and, and donating them to people or uh, whatever. I just want it to be a day where people are not stressed. That's what I want. Love it. Finally, Deborah, as you know, we are outsourcing. So if you could ask the next guest of the podcast any question, what would it be? One of the things that I'm all about is like people's first full time regular job. I would want to know somebody's favorite memory from their first time regular full-time job. See if they remember it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I actually sometimes will ask in an interview, what was the first job you ever had that was a first time full-time regular job? 
because people do, you know, like I had, and sometimes I'll ask them, like, what was your very first job? And people are like, oh, well, I worked at a restaurant. And I'm like, no, 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 go even further back. Like, did you have a lemonade stand? Did you mow lawns? Because I'm kind of always interested in that entrepreneurial spirit. Or what did you do to first, like, first job where you ever made money? Just, just to kind of see where they're coming from. What did you do? When did it start? How did it start for you? And see what, what they tell me. Because I think that sometimes that can tell you a little bit about a person. And, and you can have some great follow-up questions that come from that. It has certainly not been asked on the show. It has nope. been added and will be asked soon. Deborah, as I mentioned, when we got started, it's been part of our community for a long time. And I'm sorry it took so long to get here. I'm glad that we got here as, as we're landing this plane. So appreciative of you being involved and, and being, I'm going to call you our West Coast correspondent. I think that's <laughs> very official. So we appreciate you doing that. I know many of our listeners are probably connected with you already. For those that are not, best way for them to reach you out there. When it comes to getting in contact with me, there is always email, which I do check on a regular basis. And so for those of you who are writing fast enough or slow enough, that would be D Jeffries, J-E-F-F-R-I-E-S at H-R answers. Dot com. So that's always a terrific way to get in touch with me. Now, I am on Twitter, and my Twitter handle uh, is Frappy Girl, and that's F-R-A-P-P-E-G-R-I-L. I'm on LinkedIn, and I'm just under there as Deborah Jeffries. No, no fancy names or anything like that. You should be able to find me there, too. And those are the three places that I hang out and tend to communicate and share as often as I can. And sometimes not as often as I should. (laughs) (laughs) We will have that in the show notes. And then Wendy, how about you? Best way for listeners to reach you out there? Uh, Best way is always on my blog, mydailyjourney.com. And of course, the second and fourth Sunday of each month, you will find me on Twitter as part of our twice monthly Twitter chat, 7 p.m. Eastern time. How about you, John? Once again, thanks to our friends at Namely for sponsoring this episode in the entire month. Be sure to check out namely.com slash HR social hour to get that first month free when you switch to their service. As for me, John Thurman.com for all things John Thurman and for the show, HR social hour podcast.podbean.com. Listen, rate, review, share, and follow. Still some more episodes to come, folks. So if you follow or subscribe, if you haven't already, you'll get those new episodes as they become available. International listeners, we would still love to talk to you, even though it may not be for the podcast. Always welcome to the chat. If you'd like merch, I have international stamps. I can send them to you. Reach out and we'll start those conversations. Deborah, again, appreciate being with us. And so for the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast, I'm John. And I'm Wendy. And as always, be sure to connect. Give back and network. network. Take care, everybody. We'll see you soon. 